Ooh, max 30, 30% off. Link in the description. Luke Roper clothing. Right, morning fellas. Welcome back to another Villa on Tour video today. Um, it's a slight video idea from Harry FC. He's got a YouTube channel, uh, Harry Batters. Shout out to you, mate. He um, dropped me a message on Instagram. What we're going to be doing today is talking about my best Aston Villa 11 if we had kept all of our best players. So I've got a list of the starting 11 and a 4 4 2 formation of all the players that if we would have kept, um, our squad would be looking a little bit better because let's be honest at the moment lads it's not looking the best so if we could have kept some of these players we probably would have been a little bit further up the table um, once I have given my full 11 let me know where you think they'd come in the Premier League um, that would be an interesting one now there's only one place to start and in goal for me I'm going to go with there wasn't there wasn't too many choices I'm not going to lie but I am going to go with Pierre Luigi Gallini now we joined Villa in 2016, I think it was. It was when um, it was one of Di Matteo's sort of weird signing because of the Italian connection there. No one had ever heard of him. I think he was only like 21, 22 at the time. Um, he joined from Hellas Verona in Italy, and he only played 20 times for Villa. He made a few high-profile mistakes, like Sheffield Wednesday away first game of the season. Uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, Huddersfield on that Tuesday night, and yeah, he was only there for six months, and he went back to Atalanta, where to be fair, a few years there, he's done very, very well. He's played in the Champions League. He's played. Um, um, for the senior Italian team, and he's also become a rapper. Yeah, so it's a bit of a funny one that, but um, if you did clock in the video there, one of the lads is wearing a villa shirt. So Pierre Luigi Gallini, he still loves the villa. I think there was like an issue because he wanted an Italian goalkeeper coach, and the club was like, well, no. So that was a bit of a funny one, and then he left, and you know, everyone expected it. But an honourable mention, he nearly made it into the squad, Sam Johnston. Um, when we lost to Fulham, that was like it for Sam Johnston. Like, I, I would have loved us to sign him, but instead, um, he went to West Brom. I'm not sure if they're massively keen on him at West Brom, but just like Pierre Luigi Gallini, Sam Johnston. And he still loves the villa. Top man, Sam. He's done it! So that's goalkeeper done. Moving on to right back. I've gone with Kyle Walker. Is it a bit of a cop out choosing a lone player? Yeah, probably, but I don't mind. Lone players are allowed. I've gone with Kyle Walker. Um, he was only here for like six months, I think, in 2011. He was on loan from Tottenham. He's had a very, very good career. I think he moved for like £50 million to Man City uh, a couple of years ago. One of the most expensive English defenders ever. If not the most expensive, I'm not too sure, but he's had an incredible, you know, career in club football where he's pretty much won everything, apart from the Champions League, of course. Played in World Cups, Euros with England. Quick honourable mention to Matt Lowton as well. Very solid Premier League right back. He's gone to uh, Burnley since leaving Villa and he's very, very solid there. I just think he was like a typical Paul Lambert sort of signing from the lower leagues, English, not proven, not Premier League quality at that time. But since he's left Villa, fair play, he's gone on to have a pretty decent career. Now then, on to the centre half. There's not too many choices. I did put on Instagram um, asking for your guys' suggestions for um, all the positions, and there wasn't too many suggestions for centre half. There's only one, and that was Gary Cahill. He only ever scored one goal for Villa against the Blues, so in my eyes, he's a, he's a legend at the club. <laughs> But he joined Bolton in 2008 and then that was like the sort of making of him. He had four years there and then he went on to Chelsea where he literally has won everything in club football, I think. Champions Leagues, Europa Leagues, Premier Leagues, FA Cups, like fair play. The guys won everything at Chelsea. So let's talk about us signing him at the start of the season, I think, because he was a free agent, but he went to Palace instead. He's getting on a bit. I think he's like 34, so I probably wouldn't love him back at the Villa, but there wasn't too many other centre-back choices. But I do think... It was a bad decision for Villa to let him go all them years ago. Right then, next to him in the defence is Kieran Clark. Mm. Now, I did say there wasn't too many choices. Like, if I'm forgetting someone glaringly obvious, do let me know in the comments. But I'm going to go with Kieran Clark. I think he's still, like Matt Lowton, he's like a steady Premier League centre-back. He was at Villa for a long time, but I think, you know, when we got relegated, it was his time to go. He fancied a new challenge. He went to Newcastle, and he's done very well there. He got promoted with them straight away. Like I said, he's, you know, regular Premier League centre-back, so... He just fancied a new challenge, left Villa, fair play, but I think, you know, would I take him back? Yeah, probably. Right then, on to left back where there are a few candidates. Uh, Honourable mentions go to Ryan Bertrand, who was on loan at Villa um, for a season from Chelsea, I believe. Was was okay at the time, he's gone on to have a you know decent career. Um, Jordan Amavi as well, I think it was a case of wrong club, wrong time sort of thing for Jordan Amavi because, you know, we signed all these players from France and they all came over and it just was never going to work. It was sort of... 
it didn't even fit into the style we were trying to play. Like he's an attacking left back, and you know it just, it just wasn't going to work, was it? But fair play to him. He gave us a year in the Premier League, and then a year in the Championship as well. So you got to give him credit. Um, he's gone back to France. I think he's at Marseille at the moment, doing well. So fair play to him. But but the left back I have gone for is my mate. <laughs> Ender Stevens. I did meet him when I was about 12 and at that point he was just a you know sort of fringe player barely getting into the starting 18 at Villa. Um, made the odd appearance at Villa in the senior team but he's gone on to, I think he had loan spells at like Port, no it wasn't Portsmouth, it was like Doncaster, Plymouth, teams like that. Went to Portsmouth for a couple of years and then he got picked up by Sheffield United um, in the Championship or League One and fair play to him. He's a very, very good Premier League left back. He fits their side absolutely brilliantly in terms of the system they play and things like that. But I sort of expected him to be this sort of, you know, middle sort of championship player like a Nathan Baker, for example, where steady championship player, but what he's gone on to do in the Premier League, like credit to him, fantastic player. Right then into the centre of midfield, the honourable mentions I've got are Jordan Veritu, um, who like Amavi, it was just wrong time, wasn't it? I think he's a good player. There's clearly a good player there because what he's gone on to do, I think he went to Fiorentina, I think he's at Roma now and he's doing very, very, very well. Um, next to him as well, honourable mention, Fabian Delph. As much as I don't like the geezer, he did okay at Man City, won everything pretty much, um, apart from the Champions League. Um, but he's gone on to do very well. I think he's at Everton now and would I take him back? Yeah, probably. I don't think he's at his peak anymore, but he's still a good player. However, the players I have gone for are James Milner. Now, what is he, 34, 35? But wow, like, fair play to the geezer. He can play literally pretty much anywhere on the pitch. Um, I'd have him in midfield, 100%. Um, he's won a Champions League with... Oh. He's won a Champions League with Liverpool. He's won countless things at Man City, and I just think... His career was brilliant. Like when he was at Villa, um, first time around, like absolutely class. Um, I'd love to have him back. Next to him, Idrissa Garner Gay. Again, someone who didn't join Villa at the right time. I think even though we were dreadful in that relegation season, there was sort of quality that you could see there. You could see that um, Idrissa Garner Gay would go on to be a good player. He moved on to Everton, did really well, and then got a £30 million move to PSG. So the fact he's going for that sort of money, he's going to a side such as PSG, just shows his class. Great player. Right then, on the wings, on the left-hand side, there can only be one man, Ashley Young. Yes, he's on the wrong side of 30, but when he was at Villa, like, I feel like I've spoken about Ashley Young like, in the last three videos and just praised him, but absolutely brilliant player. Like Simon said on the previous video, I think it was, we sort of didn't, didn't appreciate how good he was at the time. He got his big move to uh, Man United, um, where he got sort of shunted into like left-back and things like this, but... He was a quality winger at Villa, like, no doubt about it. He could still do a job now with the wings that we've got. He could probably still do a job now, so I'd love to have Ashley Young back. On the other side, there was a few choices. I saw a few people saying Carlos Hill, but he didn't do much at Villa, and he hasn't done much since, to be fair. Um, an honourable mention goes to Mark Brighton as well. Fantastic work ethic. I just think we sold him for free to Leicester, which was a silly decision because he's a good player. He's got a fantastic delivery on him. He's won a Premier League at Leicester, like... Fair play to him. Even now, I'd love to have him back 100%, and he's a Villa fan as well, so could it get any better? But the player I have gone for on the right-hand side is, you probably all guessed it, he's in the thumbnail, Adama Traore. When he was at Villa, he was so, so raw. He was literally just pace. Like, his footballing ability wasn't great at all. Um, we exchanged him, I believe, for Albert Adoma. He went to Middlesbrough for a couple of years in the Championship. Um, where again he wasn't great, he was getting a little bit better but he was still just raw pace and his end delivery was dreadful. Um, but there was still a sort of player there so he got picked up by Wolves in the Premier League and you know fair play to him. Again his blistering pace is scary for any defence. But what's made him an all round better player is that his football ability and his sort of end product is much much better. He's scoring goals, I know he scored at the Etihad for Wolves, was it this year or the year before? I'm not too sure but he's a much much better player now and I think like I said any defence coming up against him and they are going to be scared because he's such a good player. Right then, up front, um, I don't think there was too many names. I think honourable mentions go to Jordan Ayew. I don't think he was... He was okay in the relegation season. He gave us half a year in the championship as well where he was very good. I, I, I like Jordan Ayew. I think he was a good player. He's gone to Crystal Palace and again, he's, he's a solid Premier League striker. He scores goals. He's got a lot of flair in him. So, good player. I'd love to have him back. Um, but I just don't think he wanted to be a Villa towards the end of his career here. Um, but, you know, fair play because we were dreadful. Like, you can't really blame him. Uh, the other honourable mention goes to Scott Hogan. <laughs> As much as I don't like him, like, he, you got to give him props because he was dreadful at Villa, he was dreadful at Stoke, and he's gone to Blues, and he's done very well. It feels like he's scoring every week. Like, fair play to the guy. He'll never play for Villa again. Like, there's no doubt about it. He will never play for Villa again. But it just increases his price, or when we do sell him, it probably will be to Blues if they can afford it. Um, but 
yeah, fair play to him. He's done a good job, but I don't want to see him back at Villa. But the two that I have gone for up front is Tammy Abraham. Yes, he was a lone player, but he was just ridiculous in the championship. I saw... When we got promoted, I would have loved us to, to sign him permanently, but with the Chelsea transfer ban and Frank Lampard going in there, they always wanted to keep him. And I just think we were a little bit tight going for Wesley instead of going for Abraham and spending that little bit more money when we knew what we were going to get, whereas with Wesley, we didn't really, and it hasn't really paid off. But if it was me, I would just have spent that little bit more money and gone with Tammy Abraham, because I think if we had him in the Premier League, would we have scored more goals? Yes, probably, because you give him a chance and he'll probably score. I missed Ami Abraham. I miss him so much because I loved him last season, but yeah, there you go. And of course, next to him, the Belgian beast, Christian Benteke. Ah, Villa, Villa Park's his home. Like, the whole end is where he should be scoring his goals. Like, he went to Liverpool. They ruined him. Um, and then he went to Palace and it feels like, I don't know what the ridiculous stat is, but it feels like he never, ever, ever scores. And... We'll never know because I was talking about him coming back in January. But if you put that Villa shirt back on him, maybe his confidence will come back and he will start scoring goals. But we'll never know. I absolutely miss him. He was the best player I've ever seen at Villa. But yeah, that, I think that's it. That is my starting 11. I'm going to leave a poll up there. Where do you think this side would finish in the Premier League? Maybe pushing for Europe because there is, you know, decent quality in this side. But I'd probably say sort of 8th, ninth, 10th in my opinion. Maybe around there. But let me know your um, 11s in the comments below. Who should we not have let go? Have I missed anyone out? Probably. Let me know in the comments. Go and watch some of the previous videos as well. There's been a lot of content on the channel. I appreciate the support as always during this tough time when there's no football. Um, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Up the villa.